All right, we're talking about the meaning of sun through the houses. I've already done houses one through four. This one, we're doing five, six, seven, and eight. If you haven't seen the other video, uh, you can check it out here. Otherwise, uh, let's get into it. The fifth house is a great one to start with. Leo is the natural ruler of the fifth house, and so this is where the sun is actually most at home. The fifth house, most directly, is where we discover and express our ego and whatever it is that truly makes us unique. It's the house of a person's selfness. There are lots of different parts of our lives where we can express ourselves and our identity and lots of different parts of our lives where, you know, we add and discover pieces that, you know, make a part of that identity. Our relationship with our family or our process of learning and our educational path or our romantic relationships. All those, however, there's some degree of, of compromise. In the fifth house, we're really talking about that most genuine self-expression that's completely unimpeded by anything else, uh, completely without compromise. Whether that's through creativity, creating children, creating some intellectual pursuit, whether it's creating love, you know, through romance, all these things, the fifth house is where we discover our significance. This is relevant to all of us. We all are experiencing the full spectrum of what it means to be a human, which is codified and symbolized and symbolized by the zodiac. But for people with the sun in the fifth house, that process of discovering their significance is going to be especially poignant. For fifth house sun people, in order for them to be most aligned with their essence and uniqueness, ironically, they need to be engaged in the process of continually discovering what it is that makes them unique. And so uh, typically with the fifth house, we think about uh, creative expression. You know, this can be intellectual expression. It can be artistic expression. It can be emotional expression. Fifth house all, also talks about giving birth to children and raising children. In the process of, of, of raising our children, we are deciding what is us because we have to do that in order to decide like what are we going to pass down onto our next of kin. The fifth house person, however they do it, need to feel that just unimpeded sense of play and joy and, and, and total experience of the world. That process is done without an ego. It's done without a self-consciousness, but the outcome is that that's what's kind of forming this more permanent ego that is taken forward into other parts of life. A well-aspected son here is going to be able to do that well. They've built these things into their life. They have made room for them. Through these activities, they've more fully discovered themselves. They've become more grounded in their own two feet and they're more comfortable, you know, with what their essence is. A poorly aspected son here can mean a few different things, right? We talk about, you know, the expression of self and fun and enjoyment that's unimpeded, right? So sometimes um, a poorly aspected fifth son here might mean um, engagement and rapturous fun or hedonistic behavior without limit, right? Or in other words, we're talking about people that overdo it. They're drinking too much or spending too much or you know maybe they're engaging in drug use. And while that can all be um, an endeavor in, in finding one's true self, it can get a little bit ugly pretty quickly. So. You know, it could describe something like that. Not only can it get ugly, it can turn into such an animalistic pursuit of, of stimulation and dopamine or whatever that the process of actually connecting with what, you know, makes the person them, like them discovering, connecting with that creative drive becomes a little bit colored and perhaps overshadowed. Same thing can be said um, with afflicted fifth house sons, you know, when they have children here. Sometimes the the child becomes almost like this vehicle for this person to play out things that they're not able to do themselves. They live vicariously through their child or they put a lot of pressure on the child to be a certain way. And while that's you know somewhat related to you know a healthy kind of expression in life focused on fifth house sun themes, it can also create some blockage or it can be a, an escape um, preventing the fifth house sun person from actually engaging and doing that discovery of significance for themselves. Food for thought here. Moving to the sixth house. On a mundane level, the sixth house is typically associated with things like routine and discipline and our daily habits. It's how we take care of ourselves, what we do when we wake up in the morning. Are we following our overlord, Andrew Huberman, and doing all our biohacks? Like, how are we taking care 
of this body? What are we consistently doing most days, right? How are the things that we're doing, how are our habits serving our purpose or serving our values or serving the world around us or the world that we've chosen? These are all valid themes associated with the sixth house archetype, but on a more esoteric level, we can think about the sixth house literally as this process of synthesizing and integrating everything that we learn and experience and incorporate it into uh, our life. And we do so in a way that sees our physical body and our physical routine as this vehicle for you know, the entire human experience. The sixth house is opposite the twelfth house. The twelfth house is a very mystical house associated with the hidden and the unconscious and what lies beyond other realities and other dimensions, everything outside of the material world. So to whatever extent any of those things are important to you or you believe in or resonate with you, the sixth house also represents kind of how we take those and again, integrate them into the material world, into a material life. A sixth house sun person is generally going to be very interested in self-improvement and maybe biohacks and their daily ritual and their daily habits, how they approach those, how they do those, how they think about those, how they decide what routine they're even gonna have, all of those things play a strong role in this person's identity. It's especially important for this individual to develop skills and abilities to be of service, right? That doesn't necessarily mean serving charities or doing charity work or volunteering or stuff like that, but serving the type of life that they want to live. If, if they expect to see their grandkids and they want to continue to run marathons into their 50s and 60s, you know, they're not going to be people that are smoking a pack a day or eating loaded nachos every meal of the day. Or if they are, you know, this is going to be a major point of, of reckoning for them, right? Because they're living in a way that's very inconsistent with something they, they value. Sometimes the sixth house seems kind of like lame, like oh, it's about like routines and boundaries and it's like not that sexy, but it's very important for people with the sixth house sun to recognize that setting these routines and creating these boundaries and creating structure for the life is really important for them. It's going to help them be their most effective self. It's going to, to make them feel most balanced and it's really kind of a hack for them if, you know, if they're not naturally already interested in it. Like diving more into these themes is really going to unlock this whole other part of the person and really unlock their personal power. Well-aspected sons here have kind of mastered some of these things and have really incorporated sixth house themes into um, their attention and consciousness and interest. You know, these things become hobbies for them. They, they meditate. Like I said, they read up on various biohacks and they're always looking for ways to improve themselves and their routines and to be most kind of optimally alive. For afflicted sons, health issues take on a really important role and there's usually some kind of incongruence or challenge, right, that they're going to have to sort of come to terms with. Um, usually it's a challenge between what they're doing and you know some long-term goal. You know what they're doing now and the way that they're living is, is not compatible with uh, reaching that goal. Especially with a son here, like that kind of conflict, there's always ultimately going to be a reckoning at some point. It's sort of up to the person how intense they want to make it. Um, it's always helpful to kind of start seeing the fork in the road um, as early as possible. Having said that, you know people that do overcome some of those significant health challenges or those major cross points in life where they really kind of have to pivot and change course it can become kind of a dominant source of meaning for them for the rest of their life not only can it propel them and, and kind of give them life energy throughout the rest of their life it's also knowledge and experience that they ultimately will often use and share with others to help others in their own journeys around some of the same issues. Moving to Sun in the seventh house. Now the seventh house, a lot of astrological interpretations always describe seventh house as the house of other, the house of intimate encounters, intimate partnerships, or close enemies. Those things are valid to a degree with the seventh house. There are a lot of other astrologers that say that that's really kind of an oversimplification and it's really an example of this human tendency to always be projecting onto other people 
into the external rather than looking within ourselves. We sometimes think about the seventh house as like what describes our ideal partner or it's the house of marriage. And this is the house that's opposite the first house. It's opposite the ascendant. And so you can see how the idea that like there's this perfect other opposite that's going to complete us is kind of baked in to some of those uh, more mundane interpretations of the seventh house. Anyway, we can still think about the seventh house as like the house of other, but really it's the other inside of ourselves, right? It's the other part of ourselves that we are tasked with integrating, but which is challenging for us. It's a shitty, hard process to do sometimes. Despite all this long rambling stuff I've just said, others still play a role in this because we see in others the things that we don't have in ourselves, the things that we really respect in others are sometimes things that we don't have in ourselves. Also the things we really hate about others are sometimes the things that we hate about ourselves or maybe don't have in ourselves but like need to and in a more accepting, integrated way. Okay, what the hell does all that mumbo jumbo mean? Someone with the sun in their seventh house means that they're going to learn a lot and express their identity, not necessarily by being with someone or being with this like soulmate, but this person is going to be particularly geared up to reflect and understand their self and their identity through their experience with others, with others almost as a mirror. This seventh house sun person is going to have a lot of experiences with relationships. Maybe they're going to date a lot of people. Or they have a lot of significant relationships. And through these experiences, the seventh house sun person is going to learn much more about themselves. They're gonna learn more about themselves through these kind of interactions, through these relationships, than other parts of their life, other parts of their chart, their job, their family, whatever. This is where the learning comes. This is where the insight comes. Concepts of one's personality and one's unique strengths and weaknesses, authenticity, all of these things make more sense to the seventh house sun person when in relation to really knowing other people very closely. Now, this is something that we all experience, right? This learning from intimate relationships through seeing people as mirrors, that's something that we're all gonna do. Regardless of whether we have a sun here, planet here, it's just a little bit more significant for the seventh house sun person. You know, a well-aspected seventh house sun, they're going to have a lot of fruitful relationships. You know, it doesn't necessarily mean that they're gonna have a lot of relationships and they're gonna end and they're gonna have to learn a lesson and they're gonna move to the next one. Like it could mean all different things. It might mean that this person like marries their high school sweetheart and they're married for 50 years and like they grow extremely closely with this person. And as the relationship is growing, they're obviously growing as an individual and you know, the relationship is a vehicle for them to grow and understand themselves. And people live happily ever after and it's all great and stuff. A poorly aspected sun here might mean uh, there could be some like codependence and leakage into other people. There's actually a breakdown or a failure to actually see oneself as separate from others and to actually, as they should, right, like use these experiences, use these relationship experiences to individuate and, and further discover their own unique identity. There's blockage with doing that and so as a replacement, a poorly aspected son here might just latch on to people or they expect other people to make them happy or their relationship hop person to person and they are a little bit allergic to doing like the real sort of self-reflection that typically incites kind of kind of growth and, and further development of a healthy ego. It could also mean that, you know, the poorly aspected son person here is like trying to find like a paternal or a maternal figure here. They want they want an intimate partner to be like their mom or their dad and just kind of like take care of them. A good adage is like, you're kind of on your own. No one out there is coming to save you except you. We all are ultimately responsible for ourselves. We can only truly be good partners and friends and lovers when we truly love ourselves, and understand ourselves and are comfortable with ourselves. So. That's gonna be a key lesson, especially for people with poorly aspected suns here. All right, finally, we're moving on to eighth house, sun in the eighth house. Now, the eighth house 
is typically described as the house of death and sex and taboo subjects and money and other people's money and inheritance. Really, all those things are actually just proxies for emotional value. Money is a symbol for an emotional value or, or emotional energy. Same thing with sex, you know, sex um, for fun, sex for uh, intimate connection or, or bonding. It's, it's really a emotional currency in some ways. And while the fourth house is related to that first opportunity and experience for us to experience watery emotions and to experience the weight of emotional energy and to kind of build uh, our basic sort of personal raft for it and to build some basic um, comfort and stability and recognition with experiencing that and managing that for ourselves. The eighth house, the next water house, is really the process of bringing that out into the world. It's, it's sharing that with other people it is receiving that from other people and it is kind of negotiating the process of exchanging emotional energy between you and between the people in your life. Typically, this is not just like a stranger on the street or some rando. These are, you know, significant people in your life, significant sources where the exchange of real human emotions like love and grief and jealousy and disappointment and heartbreak and passion and optimism and all these things in the matrix of our emotions are mixed and intermingled with other people's and it's a beautiful process it's a messy process it's a it's a chaotic process like the eighth house is, is a chaotic process this thing gets like its own house for this stuff. When we have these kind of relationships with other people through these complex emotional ties that, you know, we shine a light on our own emotions and what they look like, how we incorporate them into our life, how we manage them, how we listen to them, do we bury them, do we share them? You know, all these things and yes, things like sex and money and inheritance and death are all tied up in all of that, but it, they're almost like secondary, right? Because the larger currency we're talking about is these matrix of emotional ties we have with the things we encounter in the world. These ties fulfill a natural human desire and a natural human yearning to connect with something that's deeper than us. For the eighth house sun person, it's navigating through all of this. It's navigating through all these emotional ties that helps them define and understand their identity. And it's their ability to make use of those experiences and their ability to actually cultivate these deep emotional ties, which makes them uniquely them. That's kind of their superpower, that's their essence. A well-aspected son here is going to be able to make use of the emotional experiences of their life, going to be able to make use of you know, the emotional experiences that they absorb from others in a way that's going to help them continue to um, transform and go through that scorpionic process that's associated with the eighth house of death and rebirth, not literal, but metaphorical death and rebirth to continue to grow as an individual, to grow the ego, to purify the ego. This is a very karmic placement actually for the sun. It can be very challenging. Those with a poorly aspected sun here are gonna have a tougher time. Those psychic inheritances, those that karmic baggage, you know, kind of the darker afflictive emotional energy that they receive through their partnerships or relationships sometimes contributes to that individual's undoing. Sometimes they're not able to um, complete that transformation process or that growth process and they get a little bit consumed by it and sometimes it leads to uh, some more destructive outcomes for that individual or at least like it's just going to be a bumpier ride. I don't want to be too depressing here. Anyway, that's all for now. I will do the next four houses in the next video. Hope you enjoy this. That's all for now.